Welcome. Can you hear? Yes. Okay, great. We can see and hear. We can hear you. I'm trying to get also Richard. Just a minute. Problem is. Uh, so you can see it's a houseful, uh, houseful class. Okay, I will stay. Yeah, because uh, I have to, I want to check uh, into only late. But uh, yeah, yeah check, uh, maybe half, yeah. 45 minutes behind the schedule. Yeah, it's midnight for me, I'm being in the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you have the uh, connection details for Richard uh, Schubert? Nation? Uh, is he in. Uh, I actually try your email. Can you uh, try to connect to me and invite him on his email? Because he can start. Let me try. Yeah. Let me. He sends a common mail. No? So he doesn't uh, appear in the. Okay. Let, let me shoot an email right now. No, you can invite uh, using his email. You don't have to send email. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me invite him right here. This problem is always happening because Yes, 
Yes, I can hear you. Can hear you, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Okay, that's clear. Okay, so hold on. We are going to start the uh, session and printer, and then I'll come back to you, both of you, uh, in maybe 50 minutes. Okay, question? Yeah, yes. hello. So you are connected live and it's uh, streaming already. So stay okay. Yeah, good. You can see the class, huh? I c yeah, yeah, I can see the class. Uh, who, who is beginning? Sorry? Uh, sh should I begin with my talk? It's not clear. It's not yet clear, okay. Yeah. You can tell us. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah, he's, he's going to set up uh, the yeah. printer and uh, start the printing session, and then he's going to uh, start uh, the, uh, you know, the, the web discussion while well, well, the, the presentation through the web. Um, in the hangouts, so so we had to wait. Okay, thank you very much. So now you can see now the two uh, printer to work. So you have to give the advice or the instructions or uh, what? Uh, you have to talk to the printer. So with the computer, so you have a uh, kind of software. Uh, so this is the software which uh, runs the uh, uh, printer. Now you can see if I start the printer. Uh, uh, now, actually, now there are a lot of designs uh, on uh, different uh, online files uh, also in the server. Uh, now uh, you have uh, libraries, local library, cloud library, and you can download. Uh, Design, but we will work with the local uh, library now. Based on the complexity of the product, uh, we are going to print, and the size, the time will be uh, different, right? And uh, so now, for example, if I want to print a bar, uh, now you can see this is the 3D view, 
Oh, so you have layer view as uh, you already discussed. Now this is printed by layer by layer. That's why it's called additive manufacturing. Uh, because <coughs> now normal uh, machining, what you do is you take a hole or cylinder, then you uh, machine it to have a shape. That means that it's a removable part from the material. But what happens here is you form the design or the shape really without any uh, removable material. So it's, it's theoretically uh, zero uh, waste. That, that's the idea. Uh, now, uh, so you can see these are some of the uh, uh, designs you can print. But to save, uh, I normally used to print whistles. Uh, but dog tag is my favorite because it takes on only a uh, kind of 20 minutes. So when uh, we are finishing the session, you can see the printed uh, dog tag. But uh, the other issue is sometimes the printer takes havoc because I have not really figured out if there are some problems of you know our temperature and everything. So sometimes that can uh, break. Now, for example, these are like well done ones, but sometimes. It can uh, get jammed, so we'll see how we can do it. Uh, let me, and now what we have set is the temperature. Uh, now, uh, extrude that, uh, you know, the like kind of tool uh, here. So normally, uh, you have to make it like for this, uh, depending upon the complexity, you have to set it. Meantime, if you have questions, you can ask. Huh? Uh, printer unable to connect. Okay, it's not connected. Let me remove this one. like a normal printer, right? so it should uh, communicate with the computer. Uh, now, uh, library, I see like uh, dog tag. Now you can see, for example, depending upon the product, how long it takes, but since I already know this is not really a complex one. Dog tag, uh, you can use the details. But it will give you an idea about how long it takes. The issue is my computer is very old, so when you have Google Hangout, uploading, uh, uh, 3D printer connected, it can get also sometimes crash, huh? so it's really for that also. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the 3D view. Uh, layer view is uh, how each layer is uh, in from, from the top printed to stage. So you have 3D view or 2D view. So this is what you are going to print. So it will take around uh, 29 minutes. Now I set the temperature. Uh, 200. One train extruder here uh, set, and then uh, bit is this one. Uh, if you know, I know technology. There are three three roof, roof, machine, uh, roof motors uh, which can move vertically, horizontally, uh, x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. Let me check. Uh, let's make it 255. 
Now it's okay. 55, we are 210. So we go back and we add this to finish. At the moment, this is the actual temperature of the uh, extruder as well as uh, of the page. So, So prepare and slice the model. So the computer is uh, setting up the requirement. And also you can see at the beginning this will move to mark the territory at the beginning uh, to get the coding names. So I take the time 29 minutes. And it's, uh, it's getting heated. It is going up to 210. This is up to 50 something. And then it will start printing. Questions up to now? You know how it's going on, right? Okay. So let uh, we go back to uh, our <coughs> colleagues. You can have a discussion on this later, and also you can personally witness that. Okay, so that will be actually discussed. But first of all, one thing is you have to design it on a CAD or CAM software. I think Gresham can answer it well. But the new technology you can scan with the camera. Uh, then automatically it will be, not for this printer, for printer it will be the input. So there are different, like Google Glass. So there are different ways uh, how you scan uh, or get the design, get the shape, you printer. Okay, Gresham. Uh, you can hear me, you can start now. Yes, uh, yes, I can hear you well. So, yeah, so, uh, this is Pat, and, uh, and uh, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you all for this uh, opportunity to talk to you regarding this uh, yes, new are not, Maybe you have to come a little bit uh, closer because there's an echo. And by the way, now these are the links, for example, 
if you uh, get this link, if you share this link, for example, uh, you can watch this instantly now on YouTube without uh, being a part of the group. Also on Google Hangout, uh, Google Plus. Okay, great. Or oh, you can uh, embed this video to any website. That means uh, when you have the discussion, then people uh, we can open it to the public. We have not really done it, but for example, if you want to do another discussion, it will be uh, stream on YouTube and also it will be uh, recorded as a YouTube video. Okay, great. All right. All right. Okay, thank you, Chaminder. And uh, I'm happy to talk to you, all of you, today. Uh, and uh, so my uh, my topic today is uh, the incoming uh, third industrial revolution and and digital manufacturing. And, you know, as I heard uh, earlier, that Chamin uh, has started a demonstration of uh, uh, a digital manufacturing session right there. So. I'm not going to, uh, you know, explain about digital manufacturing uh, at a technological level, but what I'm going to talk about is its implications uh, uh, in, in the future. So let me uh, share a PowerPoint that I have, and then uh, talk, talk along those uh, slides that I have prepared. Uh, so let me... Okay. Yes, we can see. Okay, you can see my screen, right? Come in there. Okay. Yes, yeah, we can see. And go in. Okay, hold on. Something went wrong. Right? Give me a second. Wait, wait. Can anyone see the screen? How is it going? Okay, do you see the screen now? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so my name is uh, Gretchen Fernando actually. So this slide shows a uh, brief history about my uh, education and my uh, career path. So actually I went to Ikumishila Central College and then uh, I went to Peradini uh, University uh, and then I did engineering uh, from 1991 to 95 um, in Peradini. And then I studied, uh, sorry, I uh, worked as an assistant uh, lecturer there for, for two years and then in 1997 I migrated to uh, United States uh, for my higher studies, and from 1997 to 2002, I did my master's studies and at Ohio University in the uh, USA. And then after my PhD, I uh, started to work as an assistant professor uh, again in the uh, USA in a university called West Virginia University. And then after that, I, um, I decided to join the industry. So since 2009, uh, I have been uh, working at the Boeing company uh, where we make airplanes. And uh, I work as an engineer at Boeing company since 2009. And mainly my uh, expertise are in the computer design and computer manufacturing area. So uh, uh, that includes uh, the digital, all the digital manufacturing technology. So I have uh, good experience uh, and, and a lot of knowledge base in, in digital manufacturing and associated technology. Uh, of all right, so that's a brief, uh, a brief uh, introduction about me. So now I'm going to uh, talk some uh, historical perspectives uh, uh, related to the, uh, economy and also the past industrial revolution. So as you see in this slide, um, 
you know, when you look at the society, there are three major economic drivers, uh, and those three are energy, and then the communication mechanism, and then uh, transportation mechanism. Now, these three are necessary to produce any product or service that we need to need for the society. And now, when you look at the past industrial revolution, the, those industrial revolutions took place around the, the three major drivers. So in my next slide, you can see uh, in the left side here, um, in, when, you, when you think about the first industrial revolution, uh, the energy source was, was coal, or we call it, today we call it dirty coal, of coal. and then uh, the, uh, the transportation uh, mechanism that we had uh, uh, with the first industrial revolution was the steam powered, uh, I'm sorry, the steam powered locomotives, that was the transportation mechanism, and then the, the communication media we had was the newspapers and, and, and basically those newspapers were produced by using the, the printing press. So, and then, then the second industrial revolution, those again, three, those three sources remain the same, but the the, the, the sources like the energy source uh, became oil, uh, or in other words, fossil fuel, as we know today. And then the transportation. Uh, <coughs> is the internal combustion engine, or, or otherwise, uh, in other words, the automobile. And then uh, the, trans uh, the, the communication mechanism, uh, in the second industrial revolution was the telephone. Now, uh, you know, after the second industrial revolution, you know, there, were, there were many uh, countries, uh, you know, that uh, uh, that gained a lot of uh, benefits and you know started producing many things. Hello, Chaminda, can you hear me? Yeah, no? I need for clarity. You go ahead. Yes. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, that's that's better. All right. So, as you know uh, from this first and second industrial industrial revolutions, the so-called developed countries gained a lot of economic benefit and the, the people in those countries uh, uh, you know gain most benefit out of these two industrial revolutions and their um, quality of life has increased as a result of these two industrial revolutions um, the the developing countries you know has got some but you know uh, but it's still are, are you know mainly struggling and the quality of life in, in these uh, Developing countries like Sri Lanka and India and those countries are still uh, is not at a very good not at a very good level. So uh, the uh, the next my next slide talks about uh, an incoming uh, new industrial revolution called third industrial revolution. Now uh, again in this third industrial revolution also we have those three major economic drivers the uh, uh, for the energy, there is an uh, emerging uh, green energy technology that uses solar, wind, uh, and many other renewable energy sources. And then uh, for the the transportation, now we are gaining uh, the uh, the the availability of uh, electrically driven automobiles, or in other words, electric cars, electric trains, and uh, and basically electrically driven. Uh, uh, automobiles. Then our, you know, as I, as we know, the the communication mechanism, uh, main communication mechanism today is the internet. In fact, I'm I'm talking to you right now, you know, using the internet. So now, the 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 communication mechanism has mainly become the internet. Uh, although we use phones today, but the major uh, it has become a major communi uh, communication uh, platform for for everyone in the world. well, not for everyone, but for most of the people in the world. Now, uh, on top of all these uh, new technologies, 
we have this uh, an impact in the other cases also now. You know, the, the, we use this, uh, you know, energy and the, the transportation and, and communication to produce products and services. Now, in, in, in the third industrial revolution also, we use these three, but now the, the, the products and services that we will be making in the future will use the digital manufacturing technologies uh, uh, in, in, contra in, you know, in comparison to the, the big uh, manufacturing plants we had in the past with the first and second industrial revolution. So the difference between the main difference between the, the the conventional manufacturing technologies and the digital manufacturing technologies is that digital manufacturing can be done at any place. Uh, you know you are witnessing it right now in front of you because uh, you have your 3D printer running right now, which is making something. So uh, now that we couldn't do with uh, with the conventional manufacturing, where we 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 had to have very big uh, factories to produce, uh, you know, products. So that's uh, one major uh, difference of the digital technologies, where we can have a factory at our homes to produce uh, almost anything in the future. Uh, now there is uh, this new platform called this Internet of Things that connects all these things together. All the all the economic drivers on all the technology will be connected into a one platform called this Internet of Things and that is already happening. So this third industrial revolution is basically it's based on the this Internet of Things uh, powered by the green energy and then uh, uh, you know it's spread around the world through the Internet and then uh, we, you know we will be having uh, uh, like Electrically uh, driven automobiles, and then we will be, you know, experiencing uh, these um, digitally manufactured uh, uh, products. And you know, already we have seen some of these things uh, uh, happening. But then, uh, in the near future, the the digitally manufacturing product, manufactured products, will uh, will become the major. Uh, Major manufacturing uh, technique uh, that will be used to produce anything in in in, uh, in the next five to ten years, uh, and and same thing with the the automobiles. And you know most of the automobiles will become either electric or maybe hydrogen uh, driven. And uh, uh, you know in the in the near future we may not even need the phones, or the phones will be used basically. Uh, uh, in other words, the phones will become all smartphones. Uh, you know, as you have already witnessed that. So, with our phones, uh, we will be able to uh, control many of the things uh, that uh, in our homes. For example, refrigerators, and then we will be able to control the 3D printers at our homes uh, through this Internet of Things platform. Uh, you just using a smartphone, we will be able to, you know, I'll be able to control the the, the printer that you have right there in the in the near future. That is based on this Internet of Things technology. So it's it's a very exciting uh, you know time that is coming up, and uh, the the good thing is again uh, the the thir the benefits of third industrial revolution uh, uh, may may be far reaching, uh, not just to the developing, uh, not just for the developed countries, but for uh, the developing nations like Sri Lanka. Uh, because uh, we, you know it is easy to spread the knowledge now, and uh, and also we have you know we already have you know captured a lot of uh, uh, these technologies in, in Sri Lanka and other develop, developing countries um, at, you know at this point. So unlike the first and second industrial revolutions, the the, the developing nations can gain many benefits uh, out of this uh, incoming third industrial revolution. Now I'm going to uh, uh, slightly change my topic. Uh, I mean, all I mentioned that I'm going to talk about digital uh, manufacturing or digital fabrication. So the digital uh, fabrication uh, and digital modeling go hand in hand, of course. As uh, digital modeling is basically, you know, doing the design in a computer, uh, and then digital fabrication is, you know. Uh, 
fabricating or manufacturing that uh, design by using a digital uh, manufacturing tool like a 3D printer. So, uh, so digital manufacturing and digital modeling go, always go, uh, you know, together. Uh, so basically, when you think about digital manufacturing, you know, digital manufacturing is going to trigger a lot of, uh, you know, new in, uh, innovations worldwide. And uh, it will provide opportunities for everybody towards prosperity. So it will not just be only for the, the people in uh, these uh, developed countries. And then it will, of course, increase the product quality and accuracy. It will eliminate most of the mistakes uh, uh, that happened in the past. And uh, also, we will uh, we'll be able to customize the products to meet our needs uh, easily. And then uh, it will also accelerate time to produce anything and it will uh, reduce the, the cost of production and also it will provide uh, an opportunity to collaborate uh, the you know products uh, globally and product not only products the ideas and and products globally and 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 there may be many other you know uh, advantages and, and good things uh, that comes with digital manufacturing. And finally, it will, of course, uh, help to save the planet and also save your life. Um, so there are many good things that we can talk about that. I'm not going to go through all that. Um, now, this picture sh shows some uh, interesting applications of, uh, of 3D printing. And as you see here, there is a you know vast array of uh, products, uh, uh, like uh, the, the right here in the lower left. This is a uh, house being built by uh, using a 3D printer, large 3D printer. And then this is a car that was uh, 3D printed. Uh, uh, basically, the, the the body of the car uh, was 3D printed as a as a single piece. And then uh, a very like uh, exotic looking uh, violin, uh, and uh, and then of course uh, very you know exotic uh, looking um, garments and lampshades, bicycles, and 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 so many. There are so many possibilities, of course. And this is showing some of those um, uh, things that that are very hard to manufacture using uh, conventional methods. Uh, but that can be done with the with the three D printing uh, much easier. So, and then uh, I, I mentioned about the Internet of Things. So basically, Internet of Things and three D printing, all these are related uh, because uh, the, the the any three D printer will be connected to this uh, Internet of Things platform in the in the future. So Internet of Things will enable uh, Again, localized digital fabrication, and uh, that that includes this 3D printing, and then uh, uh, localized green energy production and global distribution. So, in the future, we may be able to, you know, in Sri Lanka, we may be able to capture the uh, solar energy and then maybe sell it to even uh, United States uh, through the Internet of Things platform, and uh, also the, you know. IoT or you know, Internet of Things uh, makes a lot of big data available for you know data analytics and uh, and those uh, data analytics tools will be available to everyone. Uh, if you have heard about uh, Google uh, TensorFlow, which, uh, it's a data analytic tool. It is available to anyone free. So uh, and uh, again, it, the, this big data is very useful for project managers uh, in the near in, in the future because data mean uh, of course uh, you know knowledge and then you can analyze and make decisions easily when you have uh, a lot of data and uh, there will be new and very effective education mechanisms uh, as a result of this uh, internet of things in fact this uh, my talk right now is possible due to internet and internet of things is just an extension of internet to the physical world and it enables global knowledge sharing and, and collaboration and also it's uh, uh, it, it enables the systems engineering with a holistic view systems engineering is like you know uh, planning uh, large systems include not only just uh, making uh, uh, 
technical uh, technical oriented system even the social systems um, can be planned and uh, and make decisions uh, with these uh, uh, big data driven systems engineering uh, techniques so there are a lot of uh, things uh, that uh, brings uh, that that comes with this internet of things uh, uh, for us in the in the future so this internet of things and the digital manufacturing also offers a lot of opportunities and challenges to project manage project managers so some of the opportunities are uh, you know uh, as i mentioned earlier availability of massive information and and a knowledge base and so that that information can be you know analyzed and and can be used to make um, uh, decisions in the in the future um, and then uh, management of uh, <coughs> advanced projects within small uh, collaborative commons and now this means like um, you know you may be able to even you know produce uh, like something like a car or, or, or smartphones uh, within a small uh, community in a, in a village in, in Sri Lanka or in, a, in another country so the so those are very advanced um, you know Products that can be manufactured within within small community-based uh, organizations, and so the project management aspects of, of managing such projects are going to be totally different from the conventional project management. And um, and then also it provides easy and real-time communication around the world at at any time. Also, it offers uh, many challenges. Uh, so you have to learn a lot of new tools. Uh, and so today the the the, the there is an inadequate level of skills uh, um, to handle the, the the new technology that comes with the with the IoT and also there will be a, a large number of uh, stakeholders or increased number of stakeholders um, due to the Internet of Things so the managing their expectations is is going to be a uh, kind of challenging in the future also it will uh, it will have you know language difficulties in communicating around the world as well uh, uh, especially you know if you are communicating in, in, in uh, some some countries that do, do not speak English that's going to be a challenge in the future so because you have to communicate uh, uh, you know around the world uh, uh, in the future um, when, when you do the project management because we, we are collaborating around the world all right so now uh, uh, I'm going to uh, again shift uh, the focus of my talk uh, so I mentioned about digital uh, um, fabrication and uh, now uh, you know myself and, and and several other I mean including Chaminda and Priyanta and several others we we have been working on um, and you know having many talks uh, about how to spark uh, an interest about this uh, incoming industrial revolution and digital technologies in Sri Lanka so uh, this uh, something called this fab lab uh, is one platform that we are planning to use uh, to bring this digital technology uh, to uh, Sri Lanka uh, in a large scale so in the, uh, so next I'm going to briefly talk about what uh, this Fab Lab means. So basically Fab Labs, uh, <coughs> sorry, Fab Labs provide widespread access to uh, modern means of innovation. That means it, it provides a lot of digital uh, tools that can be used to manufacture uh, almost anything. So this is the uh, uh, basically the Fab Lab concept and actually a uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology in, in, in USA is, is a, a premier um, university in, in, uh, in USA and they developed this uh, fab lab concept and uh, today there are uh, more than 200 fab labs uh, uh, around the world so basically in a fab lab uh, it, uh, uh, fab lab is basically a technologically advanced uh, local workshop uh, that offers uh, Digital uh, fabrication tools and uh, and and of course uh, not only tools but uh, uh, knowledge as well. So if you see this picture, so in a fab lab you you have you know 
sharing uh, of open thinking among people. And then, uh, of course, there are a lot of uh, software, not only 3D modeling software, but several other, a uh, lot of other software that are open source. That means those are freely available. And then there are a lot of digitally controlled machines, including 3D printers. There are many others like CNC machines and, uh, you know, laser-based machines and so on. And there will be uh, conventional tools and a lot of, uh, you know, materials, including elect electronic materials and so on. So basically, in a fab lab, uh, you can find everything you need to build almost anything. So that's basically the concept. So if you go to a fab lab, you can virtually make anything you want. That's, that's the idea. So we are going to, uh, you know, uh, establish one such fab lab, in fact not just one, but a network of fab labs in Sri Lanka. So we have established this organization called Fab Lanka that I think Priyanta will talk uh, 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 later, so I'm not going to uh, get into details, but uh, with Fab Lanka, you know, we are going to provide uh, a platform for innovation and, and technology sharing and engagement uh, of all, uh, uh, you know, all uh, demographics in, in Sri Lanka and then also provide education and also provide entrepreneurship and employment opportunities uh, to Sri Lanka. Also, uh, when I think about the, the Fab Lab concept, I, I think uh, uh, Dr. Richard Schubert, he's going to uh, talk about some, some stuff about Fab Labs as well. And then Priyanta will talk about Fab Lanka. So with the Fab Lanka, our vision is to uh, make a, uh, you know, uh, establish a maker society in, in, in Sri Lanka. So, so with that, I think uh, that's all I, I have for today. And uh, so I, I would like to hand over uh, this back to Chaminda, and then I think Richard is going to talk next, right? So if there's any questions, I think we can uh, discuss right now or, or, or maybe even uh, after uh, Richard's uh, talk. So whatever. Uh, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for uh, listening. Now, before going to Richard, uh, I just wanted to announce you that we have already uh, finished our uh, 3D printing job. As you can see, uh, this is done now, and uh, the temperatures are now back to normal. Uh, it's uh, reducing now. So this is done, and uh, you can see it's, uh, this is what we have printed. So uh, you might have seen in my YouTube that I already see. D printed dog tags, my dogs. They are the first 3D printed dog tag various dogs in, in Sri Lanka, right? <laughs> they are doing very well. Uh, yeah, so, so this is done. So I can close this. Later we can, can have a look. If it, uh, on. And also you need the printed one uh, in circulation. So you can see it's a very good finish. And because uh, unlike traditional printing, uh, traditional fabrication, you have very high accuracy and smooth uh, surface. No, I just uh, on a vacation. Okay, so uh, Richard, are you there? Yes, you are definitely there. So you can uh, start your presentation. Yeah, it's already ready. And uh, but Richard, you can show your Berlin apartment if you don't mind. You are at home today, Sunday. Normally, Richard present from Tabla, Berlin. But since it's a Sunday, uh, oh, Richard is not in at Fab Lab. And today is it's close. Um, oh, okay. Today is from home, but I thought we had <coughs> good apartment. I saw last night. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yes, Richard, go ahead. Your fifteen minutes. Ah, we can't hear you now. No, no, we can't hear. You don't need it. Check your mic. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. This is a bit, uh, speak a little bit louder or maybe come closer. Uh, some louder even? Yeah, I can hear now, but it's not very uh, high volume. Oh. Uh, yeah, now it does. It's the same configuration we had last time. Uh, okay, it's better. Now, okay, go ahead. It, it's okay. Uh, Aminda, thank you very much.
inviting me. We had already once this discussion, and it's exciting for me. Uh, oh, the, I must switch off the. I have some some echo, which is annoying here. Wait, 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 I can I can help. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's better. And it's very exciting for me to have met you, so that we can have this dialogue. Thank you very much. Uh, also to Christopher that he explained the Fat Lab. No, I have all. I have still. I have still this. Um, thank you very much to Christopher that he already explained uh, Fat Lab principle. So I will exemplify a little bit what we are doing here. And uh, normally uh, I'm in Fab Lab. Today it's Sunday, and I'm here in my home office. So I will go to the slides. This is. Uh... Now do we have the slides? Um, I just want to, to explain what I am doing. I, I have really very, very annoying echoes. It's, I don't know what to know to do. So um, I want to explain what I am doing at Fab Lab. Um, I am a physicist and also 3D artist. Um, I must go on the slide. Yes, some thoughts about my biography. I studied physics at the University of Bayreuth and also at Grenoble. I made a PhD in nuclear fusion and then I worked for five and a half years with Siemens company and another five and a half years is Siemens railroad radar. For 14 years, I'm self-employed, and since August last year, I'm with FabLab Berlin. Um, here are some points of my former uh, work. My first academic work was this. I must switch it to the other screen. No, we will not. We will not see you. Uh, uh, do, do you see? Do you see my slides? No. Yeah. On this slide, don't open the. Uh, okay, you can open. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Quickly, go ahead. Yes. yes. It's one of my earliest work I have done, more than 30 years ago, and I worked on the propagation of heat in solid states. I just wanted to show you what I have done in the first place. It's all in German, of course here in Germany. Then um, my PhD, it was on uh, nuclear fusion research. Okay. There are some technical problems. Right? It doesn't switch over to here. I must. You can go ahead with the slides. Yeah, I go. I go ahead with the slides. So um, these are just some work what I have done in earlier time. Um, and then, 15 years ago, I made an invention: how to take 3D images with a flatbed scanner. And there, I got a patent. And what I found out is that this kind of 3D uh, scanning gives very uh, uh, good pictures. And then this is the scanner I invented. It's a 3D scanner making 3D images of small objects. Um, and here I want to show how this works. This is a scanning process for taking 3D images 
of small objects. Um, so, maybe it didn't come out very well, but I, first I was physicist, worked on many different uh, processes, uh, and then I developed a procedure for taking 3D images and worked for a lo long time as artist, as you see here, and what I want to do now is to combine these back at the Fab Lab. Um, yeah, this is the second time part of my presentation, I want to show you more what's going on in FabLab Berlin. Here, for example, last year we had a visit of the Jordanian Queen who came to the FabLab and what you see down here, it's one of my 3D images I made, it's the Jeremy base. And uh, now I want to show the aspect which is very important, how we met Jaminda and me. It was in summer last year. Also shows you a little bit FabLab Berlin. This is the open space of our FabLab. Here, a small library. There, are, I would say, about ten different three D printers we have at FabLab Berlin. This was during Trump's visit to Berlin last year, and he took this video before we met. But we will right see when we meet. You see a lot of young people working at FabLab here. This the open space. They make a few concepts, and then they go to the printers. And this building is about uh, they. It's opened for. Uh, maybe nine months ago they opened this space. But they will move on to a different space in two years. It's just preliminary because we also want to uh, have more space. And this is a very important aspect of FabLab, this uh, international community that you can meet. Um, this is still the video made by... Uh, oh, yeah. We don't hear the audio. Can you hear the sound? Sure, sound we can hear, but not the. Uh, but but what the, what, what are you talking to each other? Okay, so I just wanted to show you how we met this the last time. Maybe I will go on with the other. So, I'll put this. So. Uh, it was for me is very exciting to meet Cheminda as uh, we had uh, the same scholarship from German Academic Exchange Service. So I will go on with the slides. Um, what I did last year at FabLab, I organized 
a book presentation. And this is a very interesting book about Fab Lab movement, which I read many chapters of. And uh, I invited the authors to present this book. I will show this here. So this was a presentation of the book about Fab Lab movement by the two authors in, at uh, Fab Lab Berlin. And this is a very important aspect of Fab Labs is to make this community. So, and you see these are people from many different countries, a uh, lot from Germany, but also from Finland, uh, Eastern countries. And so it's really this community effect which we have here. These are the two authors. They are from the University of Bremen and they made a scientific work on this Fab Lab movement. So it is what Christopher told us, how people get connected around the world in different countries, that there are already about 200 Fab Labs. And this is exactly the subject of this book. And this is really uh, the exchange among the community. So what you can do also is to have a look at the book. The authors provided the PDF. Normally there should be, we should see the book. I do this to uh, invite you also to have a look at the link because it's a very interesting book about FabLab movement. So, if anybody else of you has time to browse through the book, I really want to recommend it. The subject is about the authors, Julia walter Hermann and Corinne Büching. It's about the movement. The movement came about how it has been uh, the first uh, Fab Labs in uh, the US in MIT. The different materials, virtuality. So, uh, one could take out some of the sub uh, chapters and, and make uh, lessons out of it. Okay, this was uh, the book presentation. And then what I want to do at FabLab, as I told you, I'm a physicist, I made a 3D invention. I worked uh, for a long time as a 3D artist. Uh, I studied the sales process. And FabLab is now for me a space where to combine all this and to develop it further. You see it here. I've been working at Max Planck, at Siemens, at Siemens Berlin. I've been self-employed. And now FabLab is a space where I can bring in these experiences and also go into this uh, digital production. So I, I want to explain you a little bit how FabLab is in Berlin. So. There are a lot of 3D printers. This is our biggest one. It's about one cubic meter uh, printing space. This is the open area where everybody can make designs on the computers. In the background, you have a R&D center. So in the R&D center, there are small companies. And it's a quiet space where they can develop their concepts. The Open space is more for communication. Uh, again, the open space. So I have an office, a, a desk in the R&D area. But many times I'm also outside, because you have a lot of interesting combinations. For example, this day here, this young man came to me. We, we came in contact, and he pro proposed to sell my 3D pictures at different places. So you have a lot of possible communications. And this is now the R&D center. Uh, yeah, this will be the final slide where I want to explain a little bit the structure of uh, FabLab. Uh, the FabLab in Berlin, uh, you have, it's, it's very closely linked to the metal company Otto Bock. They provide the space where they, for the Fab Lab, and there's a contract 
so the Fab Lab will do some work for them. But it's very good. So you are close to a big company and you are in close contact. Then you have the Fab Lab staff, the employees. We have the R&D center where small companies are or freelancers, people like me. And then there are a lot of visitors and customers uh, who come by, who make their work there. And the thing would be to implement the role of a senior scientist who would bring his experience from former uh, institutions and companies into these different areas. Thank you for your attention and I'm open for questions. Hello? Thank <laughs> you. 
I didn't understand the last question. Of uh, you know manufacturing because 
you know, we have to make large lot because we cannot, uh, not everyone can produce it. Now, with the uh, 3D printing and uh, with the uh, wide uh, spread of digital technology, a lot of communities get the ability to produce it uh, in a customized manner. So, the need of having this mass scale manufacturing is not, uh, you know, it will basically, um, uh, you know, go away slowly in the future. So, the, the economics of the scale is not going to be valid in the future, although it was uh, very valid in the, in the past. Uh, so, th there is some, you know, there is a paradigm shift here, actually, because, you know, in the past, uh, like like Ford Motor Company, they had to make the same car, so, you know, so many units of the same car, because there was nobody else who could make cars, and then they, they you know, they could make for very well. And uh, now, now there are so many car companies, of course, but still, you know, in, in Sri Lanka we cannot make a car, so, uh, so we, we still have to buy whatever the other companies make. But in the future, you gain the capability uh, uh, to, you know, design your own car and, and make it within a small family. So it's not, you know, it's you know, you don't need to make like thousands of cars, but you may make like ten, fifteen cars, or even just one. So the economics of scale is, is not uh, really a, a, a valid question uh, when you think about the digital technology. Or in other words, the mass production is not, is not going to be very relevant in the future. There may be certain areas like making, making an airplane, for example, is, is a huge undertaking. And that uh, may still be valid, but for making airplanes also now we are, uh, we are using a lot of training things. For making a lot of stuff in class. So the 3D printers are in the mainstream now. Okay, thank not you. Just, uh, no. So it's not just for uh, COVID, COVID. It's quite in the real part. Okay, thanks. Everybody will be, uh, everybody will be creating what you like. Now, think about when you build what you want, you design. Now, you have to think that what you do. It's a massive, simple, complete, so, imagine it's like a complete different. And you manufacture, you put it manufacture. So, that will only change the idea of the going and now you can do it. That's the idea of the idea of the idea of the idea. You can say it will be not any more important because you can print anything you can do. But as you were saying, now printing car in a scale was never a skill you could have at Sri Lanka. But now with the printing, you can also print the car as soon as you roll out. So therefore, the idea of number of cost units to be successful is not But at the moment, what we can say is when you have specialized in for example, we heard that the NASA and they send the sky space to uh, the to uh, Earth space. They don't carry stuff. They have printer and their materials. So they print if you need it to scrap. But they are a part broken something like that. So very special uh, application, it is quite unimaginable. At the same time, uh, now manufacturing will be from large plant to community based. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Uh, Gresham, uh, uh, Gresham, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, now, now I can. The question is, uh, how kind of you uh, connect development of, let's say, robotic technology, or nanotechnology, and 3D printing, how can you combine them? What are the connections? Ah, oh, this is very interesting question. I mean, how to combine different areas which are currently in the, the, the focus of, of uh, investigation. So what we have, we have uh, Medicaid uh, products. They are making them brands for cleaning water and things like this. You must go into the details. But what I also thought would be interesting uh, is... We don't hear Richard. Pardon? 
Richard? Yes? We don't hear you. You don't hear me? So, yeah, once Richard finished, I'll talk. Today? Oh. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Uh, so my answer would be like, uh, I mean, when you think about a 3D printer, it is it is like a robot, and uh, so 3D printing is robotics is, uh, uh, you know, directly connected. Uh, there may be a, uh, in fact, there is a, uh, there are robotic arms that operate 3D printers. So it uh, it is uh, it basically in a fully integrated. Uh, as I said again uh, earlier, the, the 3D printer itself is a robot, like can be considered as a robot. And then uh, the nanotechnology is, uh, is uh, again uh, you know uh, is it, a technology that is uh, you know, used to manufacture things at a nano scale that that can be implemented into the 3D printing technology. And also already there are research going on that so. Uh, uh, so it, it's all related. As I mentioned earlier, the Internet of Things is the platform where all this technology is integrated together. And, uh, so, so there is uh, that, that's the other important thing: the industrial revolution. Everything will be fully integrated, not not isolated, but fully integrated. All the technology. Uh, so that's that, that's another key. Uh, uh, Contrast point. Of the okay, thank you, Richard. Thank you very much. Richard, you want to add something? Um, I, did, did you uh, follow my uh, argument about 3D printing and other areas of uh, research currently? So, uh, another area where I think it would be very interesting to combination 3D printing and renewable energies. This would be, I think, a common subject which should be investigated. Thank you. Right now, uh yeah. Come in there. I, who is talking? Who is? I, I'm waiting for a question. Yeah, Richard. This is very but uh, I don't hear anything from coming. We are talking here. Just uh, I muted my mic. So, okay. Different topics, relation of different technologies, and also therefore that means new opportunities for professionals. It can be uh, art, uh, working on 3D printer and designing your own jewelry or maybe art, art work or something. We will have, let's say, if you are an engineering background, you will be holding from your energy, water, environmental. Maybe IT guys who are now looking for uh, people with tech on. So imagine, if you don't like one particular topic, so you will have a lot of that's why it comes up. Some Something like project management will be very useful because wherever you are coming from, you will have to use project based creations uh, and working environment. Okay, any more questions? We are running out of time. That's not one side. Okay, so I think that's uh, enough for the day, but we can, uh, if you have, if you have any additional question, you can ask. Thank you, creation and uh, I think I will disconnect both of you and uh, finish the road path because uh, you will have a physical component of the design. Okay? All right, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Tamil and everyone. And we have a question. In fact, I can. What is your time? Yeah, it's one time. Good morning. 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 And I get it from the next day, so I'm, I'm going to go back to the party. Thank you very much and, uh, for having, having me.
in your session today. Uh, even though the technical problems we had today, but it was very interesting for me to follow you and to be part of your community. Thank you very much again. Okay, thank you very much.